What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and we are here on the Clemson channel at the Voice of College Football. I'm going to give you my early thoughts on this Clemson team and if they will be better or worse in 2022. Looking back at our early thoughts last year when we did this video, I thought they would be better in 2021. They were 10 and 2 in 2020. I thought they'd be better in 2021, but they were not. They were 10 and 3 and uh, significantly worse, I would say, in 2021. Uh, this team had some, some major issues. I think probably the biggest issue that they had was injuries. Injuries killed Clemson this past season. Uh, they really had a lot of injuries to key players. DJ Uyunglele did not play as well as we expected him to play. The offensive line struggled. They had a lot of issues. So looking ahead to 2022, Will this team be better or worse? Will they continue to go downhill or will they turn things around? They were third in the Atlantic last season with that 10 and three record that does include the bowl game. Uh, so going down the, the roster and looking at this team and if they're, they'll be better or worse. I think Clemson has one major problem and I will uh, say exactly what that is here in just a second. But you look at the quarterback position with DJ Uyunglele coming back. If things don't work out, now you've got another five star coming in as a freshman. I think they will be improved at quarterback one way or another. And I think the running back position also going to be really strong for them with Shipley, Kobe Pace, Phil Moffa. This team should be very solid at quarterback and running back. They only lose Michael Dukes, uh, who went out, he transferred. Uh, you look at the wide receivers, they lose Justin Ross, obviously a big time player for them. Frank Ladson, who couldn't seem to stay healthy. A Joe Joe also gone uh, through the transfer portal. You know, they're not super deep. At wide receiver, when I look at this team, they've had better units in the past. Uh, Joseph Ngata has got to stay healthy. He's got to be the guy for them. I think he has to be that number one receiver. And then you also look at Bo Collins. Those two together, I think, really are going to have to step up. Some other uh, veterans like EJ Williams in there. Uh, Brand Brandon Spector, maybe a slot guy for them. So, I mean, they've got some weapons at wide receiver, but it's not, it's not as deep as it has been in the past for them. And then you look at the tight end position. Uh, Brayden Galloway, he's gone. Jalen Lay entered the transfer portal. Davis Allen will be big for them. Jake Bringingstool, a uh, guy that was a youngster last year, I think he'll be uh, big for them as well. Looking at the offensive line, they do lose Hunter Rayburn and Matt Bockhorst, uh, two guys that, that were really solid for them on the offensive line. But they've got some, some nice young guys. Uh, watch for Tristan Lay maybe to make a, a push to be a starter this year. He was a big-time recruit for them. Jordan McFadden is back. He was the leader for them on that offensive line. Marcus Tate is back. You got Mason Trotter, who will probably play center. Will Putman, Putnam is back as well. Walker Parks is back. So I think the offensive line should be pretty strong for them. Uh, it's just about getting better in the offseason, and that's something they have to do. So offensively, I think staying healthy is, is key number one, and then you just have to have better quarterback play, and I believe they will have that. So I think this offense, if they can stay healthy, I think they will be improved uh, at least a little bit in 2022. Wide receiver position, offensive line, uh, you do have some question marks there. And then we go to the defensive side of the ball. This team's going to be absolutely loaded, especially on the defensive line. Justin Foster, really the only guy the only key guy, they lose Darnell Jeffries. He entered the transfer portal. But, I mean, you go up and down the list. you got Miles Murphy coming back, K.J. Henry, Justin Maskell, Xavier Thomas coming back, uh, Aurora Ho coming back. I mean, this team is loaded. Tyler Davis coming back. Maybe he, he might be their best player. I, I don't know. It's it's even hard to say who the best player is. You have Brian Brzee, of course. Maybe he's the best guy. This team is just absolutely loaded. Trey Williams coming back. Demonte Capehart. I mean, you can go up and down the list. Even if they do have some injuries on the defensive line, they're so deep that I don't think it'll hurt them too much. I mean, this is, to me, I've, I've looked through some of these teams, some of the rosters. I think this is clearly the best defensive line in the country coming into 2022. Don't really even think it's close. I mean, this team is absolutely loaded. You've got potential All-Americans all over this defensive line, and they are deep as well. So that's definitely... Now, this is going to be the strength of this Clemson team. You look at the linebacker position. Balen Spector is gone. James Skalski, the leader of the defense, he is gone. Those are guys that are going to be tough to replace. Maybe they take a bit of a step back there at the linebacker position. Uh, you look at Trenton Simpson coming back. He'll be big for them. Uh, Kevin Swint, will he maybe be a starter for them? Jeremiah Trotter. I mean, some young guys that will have to step up. Levante Bentley, we'll see how that plays out. But I think... While I'm really confident in the defensive line, linebacker position, maybe not so much. And then you look in the secondary. Uh, safety, 
you lose Nolan Turner, and that's a big loss for them. They have Xanders coming back. They have uh, Mickens coming back. Makuba coming back. Uh, Jalen Phillips. You look at the cornerback position. They're, they're losing a couple of really good ones. Andrew Booth and Mario Goodrich. Those are big-time cornerbacks that they're going to have to replace. Sheridan Jones, Fred Davis, Nate Wiggins. Uh, maybe depth will be an issue in the secondary as well. They, they don't have uh, quite the depth that they have on that defensive line. So defensively, because of that defensive line, I think they still have a chance to be really good on defense. Offensively, offense again, it's, it's what I talked about a second ago. It's the offensive line. It's the wide receivers. Improved quarterback play. A lot of question marks for Clemson. And because of that, I'm kind of hesitant to, to say that this team's going to get back to where they were a couple of years ago, back to the college football playoff, back to having, you know, an undefeated season or a one-loss season. I, I'm having a hard time really being confident in, in saying that. Uh, I, I talked about at the beginning of the video where I think the big problem is for Clemson, and it's the transfer portal. They're not using the transfer portal. I know Dabo, uh, he has come out and said that that if you don't commit to Clemson out of high school, he doesn't want you or whatever. I don't know exact, the exact quote. Uh, but they, they've got this team, this program, they've got to use the transfer portal. When you have all these other teams losing players and then they just load up in the transfer portal, they're bringing in juniors and seniors, guys with experience. Clemson's bringing in another group of freshmen, which is the way, of course, you always built built a program. But these young guys going up against veteran transfers, it, it puts Clemson at a bit of a disadvantage. And I think it's a real problem when you look at, at the new rules of the transfer portal when players don't have to sit out. And this is a new tool that you have got to use in recruiting. Clemson's not doing that. And I think that's part of why you saw them uh, last year, you know, some of their opponents in the ACC had, had brought in transfers, veteran guys coming in. Clemson didn't do that, and once again, they didn't do it this year. Hunter Johnson, the only transfer uh, who originally, of course, was at Clemson. So that's a big concern for me if I'm a Clemson fan. Uh, you have to move forward like the rest of college football, and they're not really doing that in the transfer portal. And I think it's going to hurt them and keep them from being potentially that elite program, that dynasty that they had, had developed into but looking just at 2022, I think this team is going to be better. I do think that they will be improved from where they were last year. Like I said, I'm not super confident in saying that this will be a playoff team. I think they have a chance to be. I think they have the pieces there, uh, and they play in the ACC, so they'll have an opportunity. Big game against Notre Dame if they can win that. Uh, you know, there are good teams, though, in the ACC. NC State, Wake Forest, even Florida State, I think, has a chance to be a little bit of a challenge this year. So... Uh, yes, the ACC is not the SEC, but there are still quality teams in this conference, uh, and Clemson going to have to get over some of those those hurdles this year if they're going to make a run back to the college football playoffs. So I think, yes, they'll be improved. I don't think they lose more than two games, so that is an improvement from last year. How much will they be improved? Well, it's, it's going to come down to those things I talked about. Depth on defense, especially in the back seven, the linebackers, and also in the secondary. The offensive line, can they improve there? Can they find some weapons at wide receiver? Depth might be an issue. And then it all comes back to quarterback play. If they are improved at quarterback, I think this team will absolutely be better in 2022.